Hurricane Laura made landfall on August 27, 2020, as a Category 4 hurricane on the border of Texas and Louisiana. With the winds of up to 150 miles per hour, Laura's eye hit Cameron around 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. It continued north to Arkansas, where it then died down and curved east to Tennessee and Kentucky. Although it died down to a tropical storm, forecasters were still warning of flood damage. We set out to see how our area was affected. We interviewed people and did some research about the hurricane. We would like to share this information with you. So I was at my mother's house. We didn't evacuate. We stayed here um, in for a parish. And, and um, my, I live in a mobile home, so I didn't want to stay in that. So I went to my parents' house just up the road. In my house, and we stayed in my bedroom most of the time, but we ended up in the kitchen. We rented a cabin in Oklahoma, so we were up there. Uh, it was me uh, and my family and my mom and stepdad and my grandma, my sister and her family. We all rented a cabin. I was in my house in the hallway trying to like stay away from it as much as possible. It was very scary. Uh, my experience was being stuck in my house in the hall with this 11 year old little girl and there were times where we just stayed in the corner. We prayed and we covered our head with a mattress um, and then whenever we would think things would calm down we'd pray a little bit more, get out from underneath it and it was pretty scary. Uh, we stayed up all night um, on the couch watching Weather Channel and texted all of our family here. So it was pretty, um, it was pretty, I guess, stressful. <laughs> um, it was pretty traumatic. At first, I was just gonna sleep through it regularly, but then I heard the wind pick up really hard and it started beating against the house. So we decided to get in the hallway and that's when the house started flooding. And then we got in the kitchen where we got under a mattress and that's when the roof came down. Um, well, the front porch was, the roof was gone, the roof was gone on half of the house and the whole inside was flooded and all of the sheetrock fell down and there was insulation on the floor and there was water everywhere and most of the stuff in my parents bedroom was ruined because the roof was gone and the sheetrock fell and it all got rained on and water was everywhere and then the whole front part of the house has to be redone because the front porch picked up and it brought the whole roof with it so one karate chopped the middle and then six other ones three hugged this side of my house and three hugged this side uh, whenever we first got we had to take a little golf cart to get because um, we couldn't get down the road so we we're kind of going through little trails in the woods um, when we first got there we saw the damage uh, to my house we didn't go in it at first we just kind of looked over it because um, uh, you know, there's not really much we could have done at the time it's still raining still real windy and so we went down to my uh, sister and brother-in-law's house and um, they didn't have any damage to theirs. They actually had, uh, so where their house is, and then there's two, two sheds, there was a tree that just got laid down between all three of them that didn't damage anything. Um, whenever we had come back by, our, back by my house, um, we were looking again, and while we had been gone to my brother and sister, my sister and brother-in-law's house, um, these other trees that apparently were just loose uh, in their roots from all the, the moisture, from all the, um, uh, you know, all the rain, had fallen, had like squeezed this side of the house and this side. So the one that um, went through the center of the house uh, damaged the exterior walls because it was you know, straight across and then uh, crushed the internal uh, interior wall for my daughter's bedroom. And then the ones on the side just kind of squished um, the, the side next to my bedroom and um, uh, damaged the roof on my porch a little bit. 
um, my shop back in the back of my house, like the lean-to that was connecting to it fell off because of a tree and our truck was under it and so it smashed that also. Um, I was kind of sad and I was worried because my animals were in the shed out right outside and I ran, made sure they were okay and um, once I saw the rest of the damage um, I was really sad because a lot there were the roof missing to the living room and two bedrooms and I was really sad because there were some of my uh, family members crying and it made me feel I was very terrified because all of the trees were very close to our house and I was just thinking well what if that would have been a little bit closer it could have fell on our house and we could have been gone. <laughs> uh, I had a neighbor text me a picture. So before then it was anxiety just because I live in a double wide, but afterwards I was really relieved. And I knew we weren't going to be able to live in that house no more. Well, um, we were out of power for 32 days. Um, we, um, we had a generator uh, throughout the time, and now we were at my mother's house because of the damage to my home. We weren't able to get back into it for about three weeks, uh, so we stayed. Uh, we were out 19 days, and we had a generator. Um, we were without power over 30 days, if I'm not mistaken. Having power. We were fortunate enough from the f prior hurricane that we had, we had two generators, but there are a lot of people that weren't that fortunate. I went three weeks without power and we had this generator. We had a camper so we hooked the generator up to the camper in the well so we could have water in the evenings and have an air conditioner and not like die of a stroke or something or heat stroke. About a week after we stayed with my sister and brother-in-law we went back to my mother's house because we wanted everybody. We were getting along really great. Everything was going really good and we wanted it to stay that way. We were out of our house for probably uh, about three weeks. Um, yeah, it was actually not bad at all because nobody else was living there. At one point in time, my parents did come home. Uh, they were there for about a week and then they went back off uh, to work. Um, but my kids got along really great with uh, my niece and nephew. They all had tons of fun. Even whenever um, we had left my brother, brother, my sister and brother-in-law's house. I don't know why I can't say that. Um, Whenever we had left their house and came back to, to my mom and dad's, uh, my niece and nephew came with us and they spent like, you know, every night there at the house with us. Um, it was really interesting though uh, with the whole um, displacement thing because my parents' house is really large. And um, trying to cool a really large house with a generator isn't, you know, super fantastic. Um, uh, my kids though were great. They found, they, they act like they were camping. We took baths in the swimming pool and um, we uh, you know, cooked on uh, a fire at night. Now we could, we could use the stove and we had a little Coleman thing, a Coleman stove and all that kind of stuff. But um, it actually, actually was kind of fun in a weird way. Uh, um, we had to move into our shop which has a camper in it. And after the hurricane, the day uh, I don't remember what the date was, but the day after the hurricane, we got as much stuff as we could out of our house that hadn't got rained on, our sheetrock and insulation didn't fall on, and we brought it into the shop. I felt like really like this wasn't my home because I wasn't used to like seeing all these trees down and having it so different, you know, just for like a few days, and then I finally just got used to doing it and getting in the routine of things. To really see what's making a home, you know, you know this, a home isn't a house, it's not a, a place where you live, it's where you um, uh, it's where uh, you, where you thrive, it's where your, your family is, it's where you, um, where you have the meaningful events in your life, you know, but um, that perspective was, was just really greatly changed for me and, um, you know, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that my, um, immediate response would be to say that I'm grateful that it happened, but I can really see how God has used this to change my perspective and um, to, to acknowledge that these things that we have really are trivial. And what really matters is where we are with Him and where we are with one another. 
And you know, that's that's the um, what Jesus tells us our greatest commandment is that we're going to love God with all our heart and we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. So if that's our focus aren't on those two things, then our focus really is in the wrong place. And so that's definitely something that I've learned throughout the storm. I think the thing I learned the most from the whole experience is that more people are willing to help others before they help themselves. Um, we have a lot of elderly, and it's not just elderly, just families that lost everything, lost their vehicles. And it was uh, very humbling to go from, I went home every night to a home, and some people went home to nothing. Uh, something I learned from this experience is to always keep someone that's good with God beside you. That's for sure number one. <laughs> you want Jesus on your side. Uh, my advice is just move. Don't even stay. That was not worth it. Don't stay there. Um, my advice would be, you know, just try and stay calm. Like for me, it was um, just looking on my phone, trying to stay calm, playing different games or talking to other people.